1979, jazz luminary Stan Getz invited you to join his band. How did you meet Stan? Someone recommended me to the band and he was having auditions. And I went over to play with him and uh, Stan was not a composer so the music that he played was either standard jazz songs or compositions by members of the group. And when I auditioned, um, I assume I was a, one of a number of guys that auditioned. He asked me if I wrote music and I said yes. And he said, do you have anything with you? And I said, yeah, and I had a piece of sheet music. And we played the music and uh, he liked it. And later, once I had been asked by him to join the band, he told me that the, the key element, he loved my playing, but he liked some of the other guys playing too, but the key element that made him decide to ask me was the uh, fact that I wrote music. Playing with Stan? Yeah. Well, playing with Stan Guess was, was uh, extremely influential to me because, uh, of course, one of the great jazz improvisers of all time, a unique voice and sound on his instrument. And being 22 years old and going out, all of a sudden playing the biggest jazz festivals, not only in America, but in the world, I was traveling to Europe and to Africa and to South America. You know, that experience was a big, big deal for me. And a couple of things stuck with me. One is that he always seemed to have a plan, and a very good plan, for how to, how to present the, the music. You know, if you had an hour to play, he really put it up, put it together in a nice way. And the other thing that, that uh, I found, realized, and I, I try to incorporate that in my, my performances, and the other, the other part is sound. He would go out on stage, he would begin the first song and play one note, and put so much focus and energy into creating a beautiful tone that the, you could just see it, it, it just captivated and hypnotized the audience like that. So I realized that sound, the sound of your instrument is paramount. In 1985, you joined the group Steps Ahead with bandmate Michael Brecker. Please tell us about this experience. On the same level, or maybe even greater than playing with Stan for me, because I would say if I had to name my favorite musician, Michael would probably be, at, if not the one, at the, close to the very top of that list. Just, you know, talk about sound, and musicality, and unbelievable technique and musical knowledge. It was everything. So playing with him on, an, on a nightly basis, I can say without any hesitation changed my life forever and, and uh, enriched my love and my knowledge of music. Great guy. And also a wonderful, wonderful guy. Well, you have done a lot of studio work in your career. Can you tell us about some of the more memorable projects you have been involved in? Yeah. Um, I would say I would definitely count this this foreplay as one of them. It's it's I know it's easy to say your most recent project is the best, but it really was a, a great experience. And there were some things that happened on it that are so special. Um, recording with uh, Steps Ahead was quite quite important. And uh, let's see, I have anything else. Well, my I I have. 16 CDs out, and I've enjoyed making each one of them, but there was one that really, for me, had the most feeling of a complete experience, and that was one that was called uh, Balance, and it came out in 1990, 92, I think, and we recorded it all in about two days, and it captured the essence of of how I felt about music at that moment, and, and, and it means a lot to me. Um, what artists have influenced you in your career? Um, Bob James, uh, Wes Montgomery, Jimi Hendrix, uh, The Beatles, very important, James Taylor, one of my favorites, Pat Metheny. Uh, I'm very influenced by, uh, by um, some pianists. I loved I continue to love Chick Corea and Herbie Hancock. Uh, I already mentioned Bob, Keith Jarrett. Um, I like John Mayer, of all things. He's, he's, he's been an influence to me. I like the fact that his albums, you can listen to every track in all of them. So besides being a musician, you are a composer, arranger, and producer. 
Which hat do you prefer? Uh, yes. No. Well, I like all of them. <laughs> they're, they're, it's hard to, it's hard to, but I would have to say that, to be really honest, the most fulfilling to me actually is the composer part. Because there's, you know, a lot of great guitar players I don't think I'll ever be, you know, you know, you can't be the best guitar player in the world, but, and I, I don't think that I'll even ever be close, but I'm a good guitar player. But composing um, is something that it's kind of otherworldly. You don't really know where that comes from. And when you write a good song and it comes out right, that lasts forever. And to think that that's a very gratifying feeling. I feel kind of blessed when, I, when a good one comes out. Well, your producing credits are long and impressive. Spyro Gyra, Acoustic Alchemy, Paul Brown, Kim Waters, Jeff Cashua, and Bob James, among others. Please share with us about some of your more memorable experiences. Okay, well, one of the very memorable experiences is uh, producing Bob because, you know, you know, being asked to produce something for one of the best producers ever, that's a heady thing. So, but as my line about Bob is that he is complete proof that the adage, nice guys finish last, is wrong. Because he's the nicest guy in the world and he's been extremely successful. So he always made me feel very comfortable when I was producing his records and it was a very memorable experience. Um, Working with Gato Barbieri was a very interesting experience because he's a very uh, kind of like intuitive, left side of the brain guy. And so you had to kind of, I, I could see what it would be like to be a movie director with like a, a kind of a difficult star, but someone that's brilliant, you know, so, so that's what that was like. So I would say those two experiences were great. But, you know, each, each album that I've been asked to produce was an honor and, 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 a, and a joy, so it's hard to, hard to pin it down. Well, as well, you have been a, they have made guest appearances on many other artists' CDs. Can you share about some of the projects that stand out? Yeah. I mean, again, each one is a special experience. You always feel very flattered when somebody says that they want you to collaborate with them on one of their records. Um, again, I would I, I would have to say that uh, you know you know not not to harp on this the foreplay thing, but but working with Bob was quite an honor. You know, being asked to to perform there, and you know what else? There's another one too. Uh, I once got to play rhythm guitar on an Earl Plug record. I thought, oh. how cool is that? You know, one of my favorite. Played last brothers. night. Yeah. Great person. You should probably tighten, tighten. tighten. Um, yeah. Will you still be involved in other projects while a member of Four Play? Yes, absolutely. Part of the Four Play plan, as you probably can see from the credentials of the band, is that everybody's always doing other things. Bob does his own projects. Harvey does his own thing. Nathan goes out and plays with uh, just about everybody in the world, Eric Clapton and Phil Collins, etc. Um, and, and I will continue producing and recording my own CDs and participating in other projects as well because I think it's part of what keeps the band vibrant because it, you know you go out and you have these experiences and you bring those experiences back into the band and it enriches the entire experience for everybody, I think. And your wife is involved in music. Can you tell us how you met her and yeah, my wife, uh, Carmen Cuesta, is a um, beautiful singer and songwriter and a guitarist. And we met when I was playing with Stan. She came to hear the band. And we met. It was kind of a love at first sight experience. Um, and my daughter is a, is a guitarist and a singer and a, and, uh, <clears throat> and a composer also. And to me, I love Carmen and I'm proud of my own work. But I think Lizzie's, it's Lizzie Lowe is. I think she's a star you know, of the show. I think she's really got something special, and I, I look forward to watching that take off. Just that it's great to. Uh, I'd like to say hello to all the fans, and thanks for, thanks for, uh, you know, listening to my little comments about music. And uh, thank you so much for supporting music. All, all, you know, we all appreciate it. It's really important.